Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. What is your favorite locality boa? This is one of the most frequently asked questions that I get. And in the past, I've kind of managed not to directly answer the question. I've kind of given different context to the answer or I've kind of deferred the answer. But today I'm gonna to do my best to give you guys the answer. What is my one, number one favorite locality boa of them all? I'm also gonna talk about some close runners up as well as discuss the characteristics that make these boas so amazing to keep. So be sure to stay tuned. So with all the great locality boas out there, it's really hard to pick a favorite. And I was a little reluctant to make this video. Um, in the past, when I've talked about my favorite boas, sometimes my opinion has changed over time. You know, sometimes it's been depending on what mood I'm in or a, 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 a interaction I just had with one of them. But I really thought about this for quite a while now, so I stand behind what I'm gonna say in today's video. And you can see based on the boa I'm holding that Argentine boas are gonna be part of this video. And yes, they are one of my favorites, but I have to say they're no longer my number one favorite. And I know that way back in late 2019 when I started this channel, my first video was my top five locality boas. These guys were number one, and I think at the time I did say they were my favorite. But since then I've kind of reconsidered and don't get me wrong, I love these animals. I think they're great. I just think that there are a few other choices that would probably be uh, uh, you know, above these guys. And you know, first of all, you can see how beautiful this animal is. She's just very impressive looking, beautiful colors. They look different from other boas. That's kind of what always has attracted me to them. They're also the first locality boa that I bred. So they're always gonna have a special place in my heart and I just love looking at them and interacting with them and enjoying their unique behaviors. But I think the one characteristic I gotta say makes it so that they're not my favorite. You could probably notice they're kind of not very chill to handle. Uh, you know, and this isn't just based on one animal. This is all my Argentines from different bloodlines kind of act like this. They're a little more active than most other boas. They don't really hold still and they don't hold on. You know, most other boas are gonna wrap around your arm and they're gonna just chill. You know, some like my Tarahima or a Kral Key, well, or you know, Kalka Key, they'll just wrap on my arm and just chill there. I don't have to kind of worry about them, but these Argentines, they just don't really hold still. And you know, this isn't a terrible thing, but uh, depending on what you want from an animal, sometimes it can be a little annoying, you know, especially when I'm trying to film these videos. Can see this girl is just keeps moving but uh anyway this is a beautiful animal this female is what is she about three and a half four years old i think not quite full size but uh just a beautiful impressive animal this argentine boa so i had to put that female back she's getting a little restless thought i'd grab this guy this is a male max pink bloodline argentine you see he's got these beautiful pinkish magenta blotches in between each saddle and most baby Argentines have these blotches of pink, but they will typically fade when the animals are about a year or so old. But these Max Pinks are a selectively bred bloodline from Bob Guerriere that retain this beautiful pink coloration. And they're just, they've become really popular. They're really a, a beautiful to look at and just a great animal to keep. But I had to t talk about one other characteristic about Argentines that kind of doesn't make me make them my favorite boa and that's the price and as you probably know the price has kind of skyrocketed over the last five years or so these guys right now just for a basic wild type looking one for a baby you're probably looking at around 800 to a thousand dollars and then these uh selective morphs or bloodlines like the max pink you're looking at several times that and it's kind of insane to think really because not that long ago argentine boas could be got for around 150 to 200 dollars you know and i think that is way way undervalued but today they're just uh definitely a premium value and there's really not that much of a supply you know you think that with the expense of these animals people would be breeding them and supposedly they're one of the easiest types of bows to breed according to some of the books but uh, there's really not that many on the market and personally i have not found them to be all that easy to breed uh, they were my first success as far as boa breeding and I my second time I bred them was almost by accident 
But in general, I would say they're like any other boa. It's really hit or miss. You know, you can put two together that breed for you. You have babies with no effort. Or you could put two together and just really try and year after year and then nothing happens. There's so much out of our control when it comes to breeding Alboas and Argentines are no exception. So there's a limited supply, they're really expensive. You might say, well, as a boa breeder, it's in your interest to have the price of these animals go up. And I would say yes to a point. And when it gets to the point where nobody can afford them, that's, no, that's really in no one's best interest. And I would say that um, as you go up in price of an animal, there's going to be fewer and fewer people who are going to be interested in buying it. And I would say for every person that you know has a thousand dollars to spend on a boa, there's probably about ten people that want to spend you know maybe two to three hundred dollars and just get an entry level pet. You know, which, as it should be. Some of those people, uh, you know, eventually might, they might be in the $1,000 range, but right now they just want a pet. And these Argentines are just so expensive that, you know, the market is somewhat more limited because of that. One of the things that I kind of worry about is if, you know, the prices of these animals keep going up and up and up, pretty soon it's just going to be the specialty market and nobody can afford them. And then the whole boho hobby might collapse. You know, and hopefully we won't come to that. I think the prices have softened a bit in the last year or so. They're still really expensive. Um, I think part of it is inflation though. I mean, the dollars are so worthless now compared to what they were just a few years ago. You know, a thousand bucks is basically equivalent to maybe four or 500 bucks a few years ago. It's pretty sad, but unfortunately that's the case. But I digress, getting back to it. Argentine boas, while they are definitely one of my top favorites, I'd have to say they are not they are not my number one favorite locality boa. Which brings us to two remaining contenders for my favorite locality boa. And in thinking about this question, I, I often ask myself, if I had to get rid of my entire collection with the exception of one locality, what would that be? And so I kind of answered this question a couple ways. So the first is, you know, the answer to what locality would I keep if I had to get rid of my entire collection. The second way to look at it is what locality would I get if I didn't have any boas and I was starting fresh and wanted, you know, my favorite boa. So, I'll, you know, that's narrows us down to two animals. The first, as you can see, is obviously the Suriname red tail. And this is definitely the boa I'd keep if I was only keeping one boa in my collection. And these guys, I just love them, and they just do really well for me. Uh, Surinams, I breed almost every year. I've had quite a few litters over the last 10 years or so. And almost always when I pair them up, I get a successful litter. So it's really, I'm really lucky, I guess. I, you know, I don't know if that's my skill or if it's just luck. You know, I just happen to have really good breeding stock that do really well in my facility and breed for me year after year. Uh, from the literature, true red tails in general are harder to breed than most other types of non-red tail boa. Personally, I found Surinams are about my easiest type of boa to breed in my particular facility, easier than some other non-red tail types that I bred. And it could just come down to the fact that I have really good breeding stock that does really well. But these animals are also so beautiful to look at. They're just the epitome of the true red tail. If someone wants a true red tail boa with the long, gorgeous red tail, the Suriname, you can't really beat. They've also got these beautiful, distinct, crisp, contrasting markings, and they just have a lot to offer. They got the nice musculature of the red tail. And, you know, not quite as squeezy as some of the others, like the Peruvians. Although it, you know, it depends on individual boas, of course. And I also am quite lucky that I have a pretty diverse collection of Surinams. I've got multiple different bloodlines, some of which I've taken into multiple generations. And I've kind of taken my breeding project in a specific direction, or you know, specific directions really, because I've got several different characteristics I look for in my holdbacks. And I just really like them. I'd also have to say that by the number, Surinams are about 25% of my collection. I've got a lot of Surinams, a very diverse collection. And so if I was only going to keep one locality boa, it would be the Suriname True Red Tail. So that's one way of answering what is my favorite. I forgot to mention that last animal was a Prometheus bloodline male born in 2016. A son of Prometheus from my first litter from that founder animal. And he's a proven breeder. 
hopefully we'll have some of his babies available from 2023. I still have some 2022 babies of his available, by the way. So I thought I'd show you one other animal also from Prometheus. This is a 2017 female, so a half sibling to that animal. And I plan on breeding these together to amplify the contribution of the original founder. You can see this female is unfortunately a little bit flighty. I don't really handle her that much, but she's got these gorgeous markings, lots of color, beautiful, irregular looking peak saddles. Just a beautiful animal to look at. She's just got this glow to her with the pinks and oranges and the beautiful colors. So great Suriname to red tail. Before we move on to the next type of boa, just thought I would show you one more Suriname. And this guy is a viewer favorite. This guy is named Mr. Pink. He is a 2019 born Suriname from Florida red tails and two to hope bloodlines bred by Brian Abramson. Unfortunately, he's deep in shed now. So he looks really kind of milky looking and not very colorful. But after he sheds, he's one of my most beautiful Surinams, beautiful pink colors, long red tail. But the reason I grabbed this guy is he's just super chill. And if you saw the female I just got out, she was a little bit flighty. But some Surinams are super chill like this guy. So there are some behavioral differences in the different Suriname lines and different individuals more, more so than the lines. But this guy, for whatever reason, is just super chill. He's definitely one of the animals I like to get out when I'm filming videos because he's so nice to look at, so nice to handle. Definitely one of my favorite Surinams in the collection. And he brings in more bloodlines to my diverse breeding group. So I look forward to breeding this guy. Maybe about two or so years from now, he'll be ready to breed. Which brings us to the last boa, which I would have to say is my favorite boa. And that is the Branchia Columbia locality boa. And I just love these animals. I have a trio, two females and a male, bred by Michael Beach from the Rio Bravo bloodlines. These guys are born in 2020. So I've only had them a few years. You know, I definitely would have gotten some earlier and had I known how great they were. This is one of my females. She's just so gorgeous looking. Uh, she, her colors are just really, really developing beautifully. She's got this beautiful kind of like strawberry, pinkish, purplish color to her. And she's just getting better and better with every shed. She's probably, I don't know, maybe two years away from adult size. Right now she's probably pushing five feet, I would say, four and a half, five feet. But uh, what I love about these guys, not only are they gorgeous to look at, but they're super easy to keep, super uh, tolerant of different conditions, and just great to interact with. They're so chill. They don't really move too fast, but they kind of explore inquisitively. One of, you know, one of the best, if not the best boas for the handler to interact with. And as I've been saying in many of my, bo my videos on beginner boas, Colombians are probably my number one recommended type of locality boa for beginner. But these branchia have the added advantage of this, just this gorgeous looking coloration. You can see the tail. It's not quite bright red like a true BCC, but they've got this beautiful brick red tail. And you know, Colombian boas are called Colombian red tails or even red tails by many pet shops. And a lot of the purists get really up in arms about this. And if someone says their Colombian boa is a true red tail, if it's not a BCC, they're just gonna kinda go nuts on them on some of the groups on Facebook. Personally, I think this is really dumb. You know, if a boa has red in its tail, you can call it a red tail boa, I don't care. Okay, this is not a true red tail. This is not a boa constrictor constrictor. This is a boa imperator slash boa constrictor imperator. And it, it doesn't matter. It's every bit as beautiful and desirable as a true red tail, if not more so. Okay, so if you don't have a true red tail, don't, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, these guys are every bit as good as a true red tail any day. And if I was starting from scratch, I would definitely pick one of these over a true red tail. This is my other branchia female. A litter mate from the female I just showed you and you can see she's considerably different looking not quite as brightly colored but this beautiful symmetrical pattern with these circle backs down her spine and these two have kind of been going back and forth as my favorite 
I'd have to say, you know, the female I showed you right now before with the more color is kind of my favorite right now. But when I first got them, this girl was definitely my favorite just based on her beautiful symmetrical markings. And she still is, you know, it's kind of hard to say which one I like better of the two. They're just such gorgeous animals. These branchia, like other Colombian boas, are typically a lot more tolerant of different conditions than the true red tails. They never regurgitate. I don't have issues with you know, humidity not being high enough, or I think they're also probably a little more tolerant of wider variations in temperature. Although, of course, I keep them all about the same with a cool side of 75 to 80 and a hot spot of about 90 with 60 to 80 percent relative humidity. But uh, just great animals. They always feed, you know, never any issues with feeding, never been bitten by one. You know, they seem to be maybe a little more intelligent than other types of boas as far as recognizing the handler just based on how they interact. And they're just such a great boa to have and to keep. Uh, I just think they're just the best of all worlds. You know, best pet to handle, best animal to look at, uh, great animal to keep as far as the husbandry. You just can't go wrong with one of these Branchia Columbia boas. And not to leave this guy out, this is my male. And this guy is uh, also beautiful to look at. I'd have to say I don't like him quite as much as my two females, although he's pretty close and you know maybe my opinion will evolve over time. He has this beautiful light tannish coloration, not quite as brightly colored as the first female, not quite as symmetrical markings as the second female, but still a really really nice animal uh, from the Rio Bravo bloodline of Branchia. You can see the tail not quite bright red, but kind of a rusty red. And let me grab them from there. So you've seen the three branchia boas. If you're feeling up to it, write a comment. Tell me which one you like the best of the three and why you like it the best. Uh, it's always interesting to see what the viewers think. So to summarize for this video, if I had to pick just one boa to classify as my top favorite locality boa, it would be the branchia columbia locality boa. And I just want to close this video by saying that other types of Colombian boas are pretty similar overall to the branchia in terms of the looks and the behavior and their desirability as pets. And even if you can't get a branchia boa, it really is worthwhile getting a Colombian boa, even if you don't know its actual locality, even if it's mixed. If it's still largely Colombian, it's going to be a great boa to keep. I wanted to end by showing you, my, this is a Coupes Pastel Colombian. This is my other line of Colombian I'm working with. This uh, female was born here this year. And I really like these guys as well. They, they're not locality specific Colombian like the Branchia. But overall, they have a similar look, generally similar behavior. I think she's getting a little freaked out. But uh, you can see the beautiful orange coloration. So these are a selectively bred bloodline from Silvio Coops, a breeder in Europe. The project has been continued by Vin Russo, who bred my uh, adults. And now I'm taking the project to the next generation with this holdback female. You can see she almost looks like she was dipped in orange paint. It's kind of insane looking, really. Just a beautiful looking animal. And the behavior is similar to the branchia. The, um, the overall body shape and you know the, the husbandry is similar to the branchia. These are a pure Colombian line. Um, they possibly they are also largely from Barranquilla. I mean, I'm not sure where the animals that Silvio Coop started the project with came from, but they may well have become from Barranquilla. But he's taken it, him and Vin Russo have taken it to the next level just by selectively breeding for the pink coloration. And I actually have one remaining baby for sale from my 2022 litter, which you can see on my Flickr site if you're interested in checking that one out. But then also, even if you can't get a specific bloodline like a Coupes Pastel, just a regular Colombian boa that many pet shops carry is going to be a great pet boa and a lot of the same traits as the Colombians I've shown you in today's video. Even something that might not even be pure. You know, if you're, if you're a locality purist, you probably don't want that. But a boa from a pet shop is probably, even if it's not pure, it's probably, you know, 70, 80 percent Colombian. It's kind of hard to tell. But it's still going to make it a great pet and have a lot of the positive attributes that make these boas such great animals to keep. So definitely check out Colombian boas if you haven't already. They're great for beginners all the way up to the most advanced locality purist and you just can't go wrong with them. 
So that's my answer to the question. What is your favorite locality bow? I hope you enjoyed it. Hope this was helpful. Feel free to comment below with anything you think, including what is your favorite locality bow. I'd love to read it, as would the viewers of this channel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.